Upper Scioto Valley is the site of this week's playoff matchup. We are in the first round in high school football action here on WOSN. Upper Scioto Valley hosting Delphus St. John's, the number two team. The Rams taking on the number 15 seed Blue Jays. Hello again, everyone. Alongside Dave Bowen, I'm Patrick Kamler. And a two versus 15 matchup. But you look at this one on paper and you look at the records and you think, man, it's, it's, it's USV. Eight, nine and one coming off a tremendous season. They've won nine games in a row, but I tell you what, the record that the MAC has in the first round is just one of those things you cannot ignore in this matchup. You're right, Patrick. It's great to be your wingman tonight for playoff football, high school style, and the MAC conference. St. John's obviously three and seven, two and six in league play, going against Upper Sayota Valley, nine and one, eight and zero in the Northwest Central Conference. It sets itself up for a dandy, but yeah, I'm not sure that St. John's is the underdog when you get out on the field. Uh, neither team, two evenly matched teams. It's going to be fun to see how it plays out. Our first quarter sponsor is Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC as we have the kick underway brought out to the 40 yard line and that's where the Rams will set up shop with their first drive. I think that was Caden Lowry who returned the kick there for USV. Quarterbacking for Upper Sayota Valley. It's number five Maddox Underwood. Just a dynamic athlete. Throws at a 60% completion rate and he has run for 1,437 yards. So a dual threat in the backfield at the quarterback position for Upper. Can do it with his legs and his arm. Let's see what the offense decides to do here on first down. Rolling it, Underwood is going to take this one and run out across the 45, out across the 50 to the 40 before he's brought down at the 35-yard line. That's going to be good for a Critton Aerial Applications first down as Alex Heron in on the stop for the Blue Jays. That's a great start for USV. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered as far as the recipe is concerned for Upper Scioto Valley. Great chunk play on first down and Underwood shows us his speed coming around the edge. St. John's are going to have to flow to the ball a lot better than that or Upper Scioto is going to keep going around the end. It's one of the things that makes Underwood so dangerous and creates those opportunities downfield for him is his ability to run here in the gun on first down the handoff getting back to the line of scrimmage and that is it buried under a host of Blue Jays is the ball carrier number one Ryan Roberts yeah Ryan Roberts he is also an outstanding rusher has 1200 yards on the season 8.6 yards per carry but they're going to test that middle for uh, St. John's but I think they're going to find overall it's going to be tough sledding in there no gain on that play officially so second down Pistol formation for Upper Scioto. And the option. This is Underwood again, cutting back to the other way, out through the 25-yard line. And it's going to be very close to a Critton Aerial Applications first down. They will give it to him. It is the first down. So he goes left, and then he comes back right. Great vision right there by Underwood, seeing that the St. John's defense flowed to his left, and he breaks it back to his right, picks up that first down. And almost in the red zone, first and 10 on the 25. Yeah, the old full yeah, house. T, yeah. yeah. Backfield. Letting it, letting it go here is, that's number four, Mason Thompson with the carry. Only picks up a couple on that plate. Mason Thompson has had an outstanding season as well. He's done a lot of his damage catching the football. Has 13 catches on the year for 249 yards and two touchdowns. But, yeah, the full house backfield right there. The old wishbone is what yeah. the, that looked like right there. Now they're back in the pistol. So you old school football fans appreciate that one. And we're going to have a stoppage here. This is a good time to introduce our officiating crew. William Horvath is our referee. Anthony DeRose, Vince Ozier, Barry McCullough, and Steve Johns, our officiating crew for this playoff game. Thank you, Dave. I think there were, I think there's some issue with the play clock, perhaps. Yeah, and it's at 15 right now, so that can't be accurate. And they're not going to start it, so they're going to have the play clock on the field. Underwood will tuck and run, gets a couple of yards. 
before the Blue Jays push him back. He'll pick up a couple yards on that play. Third down coming up. Jackson Hurston, one of the big uglies for St. John's. I say that with affection, Patrick. The affection one and, and only, affect. Yeah, yep. the one and only Keith Jackson, the great announcer of college football back in the day. Third and eight. I think you're in two down territory right now if you're upper Sayota, but you want to pick up some yardage here if you don't get the first to make fourth down manageable. You want to avoid fourth and eight if you can. Here's Underwood back to throw in trouble and is avoiding the sack. Gets this one off, pass complete, out of bounds at the 10 yard line at Critton Era Applications first down, put them in the Lodox Jewelry red zone. What? A play by USV. Does a great job of scrambling. He eludes the St. John's rush. And he completes that pass. I believe that is to Caden Lowry, if I have the number correctly stated. They're back at it. Handoff to Thompson on first down. Gets a couple of yards there. So here on this first drive, Upper Sayota really attacking with their left side of their offense would be the right side of that St. John's defense. Everything seems to be flowing away from us. And that's what I've noticed this year with high school football. A lot of teams on offense, they just continually pound one side of the defense, mm -hmm. try and wear them out. They find that one side, either they like a matchup, they like how that looks on that side, and they just keep attacking it. Snap high, but able to get it. Option play, this is Roberts working that near side out to the five and in to the end zone for a Kenton Moose touchdown. Nicely done on the pitch. Underwood holds the ball as long as he can, draws the St. John's defense to him. And then you're right, tosses it to the junior, Ryan Roberts, and he scampers into the end zone. USB draws first blood. A 60-yard drive for the Rams, and they are an extra point away from making this a 7-0 lead for Upper Sayota Valley. And they're going to go for they're two. They're going to go for two. Hmm? We got some unique things so, happening yeah, here, Patrick. Yeah, changing some things up here. And tossing that one in, and no problem. Putting that one in for the two-point conversion. So with 8-12 remaining here in quarter number one, it's an 8-0 USV lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Well, if you wanted to uh, instill hope in the Upper Side of Valley faithful, you go right down the field and score on your first drive, and that's exactly what the Rams did. Outstanding drive, Patrick. Eight plays, covered 60 yards. Uh, the Roberts run into the end zone, and then the two-point conversion, the pass from Underwood to Thompson, took three minutes and 44 seconds. And yeah, Upper Scioto Valley has set tone here on their first drive. They've thrown the first punch. St. John's has got to go with the counter punch. Looking for the onside kick, I think. And it is caught by Delphi St. John's, Dylan Hummer coming up with that at the 46 yard line. So the Blue Jays will take the football and they will have a short field to work with. Yeah, short field right here. That's not what you want to do. If you'd have got the onside kick, great. Uh, you know, they pooch punched it there, the punch kicked it. It just, the situation now where St. John's really, really in good field position right at midfield. So Drew Boggs will bring the offense out for the Blue Jays for their first drive of the game, first and 10. Five wide for the Blue Jays. And a uh, little confusion there on the sideline, I think. Boggs didn't seem like they had everything in place. Boggs is going to tuck and run here on first down. And now he has a nice run out across midfield to the 45-yard line, just shy of it before he is pushed out of bounds. So nice first run for Boggs and the Blue Jay offense. Yeah, it's going to pick up nine yards. It's sort of situation there. 
Drew Bog says, okay, Mr. Underwood, if you can run the ball, I'll show you that I can as well. And he does have a nice game there to start things off for Delta St. John's. Boggs had a period of the season where he was banged up and uh, is looking pretty healthy now, rounding out into form at really just the right time. He would yeah. be healthy in the postseason. Hurt me in a game, missed the Coldwater game, and has played in the last three games. Second and two. Here is the handoff out across the 35 as Riley Mueller takes that across for a Critton Aerial Applications first down. Riley Mueller goes right up the middle, gets the first down and more. In talking with Coach Schulte, he said, pound for pound, this kid is the toughest nugget on this team. He is a football player. You'll see it on both sides of the ball right there. He does not carrying the pigskin for first down. Ball around the 35-yard line. And the Blue Jays on the move. This is Mueller. Gets the handoff, couple of yards out to the 31 before he is tackled by a number of Rams. Great patience there by Riley Mueller. Nothing there initially, and he just kept chopping his feet and then found the opening and able to pick up positive yardage, make it second and uh, a short six. I thought he was going to wait too long there for yeah. a second. And just get stopped in the backfield, but able to make some yards. That'll bring up second down and six. Here's Boggs, get the high snap, quick pass. Connor Gagne, the recipient, out across the 26 yard line before he is thrown out of bounds. That will be short of a first down. I think that was uh, Maddox Underwood in on the stop. So a nice pass out to the flat, a safe pass for mm -hmm. St. John's. They pick up positive yardage. Not going to have that one intercepted. And again, gets gets everything flowing in the direction you want. Drew Boggs, we had him together back on week two against LCC. Uh, you and I did on WSN, Patrick. Mm -hmm. And he just is a really good game manager back there. And we're seeing it exhibited on this first drive. Said he was impressive against LCC, certainly, and we'll see how that translates here against Upper Side of Valley in the first round of the playoffs. 6.46 to go here in the first quarter. Handoff to Mueller, and on third down, the Upper Side of Valley defense stands up. And be interesting to see this is four down territory for the Blue Jays. A absolutely, but it's going to make it more challenging because of that tackle for loss. Nicely done by the, Saint, or the uh, Upper Side of Valley defense. Back to fourth and a long four. Big play right here in this first quarter. Fourth down for the Blue Jays. Need to get to the 25 yard line for a first down. Trying to get the Rams to jump it looks like. We'll see if there's an actual play upcoming. All right, snap, Boggs lets it go, pass is high, incomplete. So the Ram defense holds and forces the turnover on downs. Yeah, great defense right there. And I know it's only the first quarter, but the non-verbals for St. John, some of the guys walking off the field, shoulders dropped a little bit. If Upper can put a drive together here, we may have ourselves a, a real good one in the sense that um, St. John's is gonna have to go to work to get back in this one. The momentum definitely on the side of Upper sure Side is. of Valley. Yes. They have the ball on the 30. 5.56 to go here in the first quarter. And this is a handoff. And there, the referees let that one go for a minute. <laughs> I think it was Ryan Roberts on the carry. Yep. Yeah, it was Ryan Roberts. I said, I thought that play was stopped about five or six seconds before they blew the whistle. Uh -huh. You know, coming into this game, St. John's on offense, they average 16 points per game. They give up 31.6. Upper Sayota averages 35 points per game, and they give up 8.9. Um, right now, the offenses are holding, according to Hoyle, in the early part of this game, with, with Upper being up 7-0, to zero, or 8-0, to zero, excuse me. Underwood in the gun, pitches out. This is Roberts. Roberts is going to get stopped in the backfield. 
Blue Jays not buying it, not having it. Third down. Little surprise we haven't seen Underwood run with the football around the edge. They were so successful with that in the first drive. I think we'll see him carrying it here. The only problem is carrying or throwing it, you know, run pass option for him. Right. The only problem, Patrick, is I, I, if I know that, I'm sure St. John's knows that as well. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Not going to yeah, fool would, anyone would, right here. Would not be surprised to see maybe a blitz on this play, see yep. if the Blue Jay defense pins their ears back and, and they comes. Here they come. And Underwood in trouble, flushed out of the pocket. And this time he's going to be sacked for a huge loss back at the 15. And that was Riley Mueller in there blitzing from the middle as well as number 54 for Delta St. John's. Alex Heron does a nice job coming through the middle as well. He said, I think just about their entire defensive line ended up nearby Underwood on that. So that's gonna make this fourth and 24. And a chance for the Blue Jays to get the ball back with another short field to work with. Let's see if they can make some hay from it. Ryan Roberts, your punter. And Roberts gets it off. Nice long punt out to the 47-yard line. And it's Gagne out to the 29-yard line. So the Blue Jays in business and great field position to start their next drive. Yeah, so they didn't get um, in the uh, end zone or score points on their first drive, Patrick. They, they had to turn it over on downs. But as it turns out, it really didn't hurt them at all. They were able to hold upper to a three and out. And then on the ensuing punt, Gagne, he gets that ball right back down there where they had it, where they turned it over on down. So it's almost like nothing happened, but a lot happened. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. They stopped at the 30, and then after getting the ball back, they will restart at the 29. <laughs> yeah, a one-yard gain after four right, plays. Yeah. yeah. It really is a game of inches, isn't it? <laughs> 3.35 to go here in the first quarter. Rams up eight to nothing. Blue Jays looking to answer. Here's TJ Wirtz getting the carry out to the 25 yard line. TJ Wirtz in the game for the first time since the Versailles game back in week number three for Delphi St. John's. Uh, had an injury in that game against Versailles. It's great to see him back out there. I bet he's been chomping at the bit to get on the field and he definitely is a big part of this St. John's, not only offense, but defense as well. Don't know if we'll see him on both sides of the ball tonight, but he is back out there, and that's a great thing for St. John's fans to see. I'd say without a doubt, Blue Jays fans, definitely glad to see that young man back in actions. And here on second and six, we're gonna have a false start against the Blue Jays. So second and six just turned into second and 11. Upper Sayota will definitely take that penalty mm -hmm. and push him back. Getting huddled up here. Talking about the little things that matter and something that the Blue Jays have struggled with is, you know, they try and get some positive momentum going and then the penalties and mistakes and things like that just kind of sh shoot themselves in the foot. See if they can overcome that. Here's Wirtz again on second and 11 and carrying guys with him out across the 24 yard line. So that'll make it a third and manageable here for the Blue Jays coming up. Yeah, straight up the middle for TJ Wirtz and he just attacks the defense right there. It's gonna go off the field right now. Been on there for three plays in a row, catch a breather. And Gets a high five from the coaching staff. Third and manageable, and as we said, probably two down territory for the Blue Jays. Tyler Lindeman will come in for Delphi St. John's as we're gonna see a, looks like a four wide setup. Mueller in the backfield along with Drew Boggs. Boggs, quick pass, throws that one up. Pass is complete. Good for a first down, Drake Fitro in there with the catch, and that's a Critton aerial application's first down. Nice timing pattern right there. Boggs thrown to the spot. Fitro goes to that spot and catches the ball. We had a great angle from the press box right here on that one. First down for the Blue Jays. 
That was a dangerous pass, too, the way that hung up. I thought that USV had a play on it. But in any case, they make the completion and they keep the drive going in the Lottox Jewelry Red Zone here at the 15 yard line, first and 10. Here's Gagne on the sweep. He's still pushing yeah. the pile out to the near the 10 yard line. I thought he initially went down pretty quickly there, but not the case. Looks like he picks up five yards on the play, Patrick. I think you're right. So we're coming up on the final minute, in the final minute of quarter number one. And you're right, Dave, second down and five. Looking for additional guidance from the sideline. Boggs corrals it, this is Mueller. Mueller taking it straight ahead inside the five to the three yard line. Remember that mark around the two. Give him the crit and arrow applications first down. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not the last play of our first quarter. St. John's take the opportunity to talk about it at the break to make sure they have everything lined up first and goal from the two. Well, TJ Wirtz comes back in, so I would imagine the ball is going to go to him. Well, I think they're going to try and get it in here yep. before it ends. They got five seconds left. We'll see if they get it. I don't know if they will. They will get it in. Wirtz pushing ahead. And no signal, no signal, yet. signal yet. The Blue Jays say they've got it. They're going to mark him short. They're going to say no. And that is the end of quarter number one. It is 8 nothing USV, but the Blue Jays on the doorstep. Second quarter coming up when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our second quarter brought to you by Path Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Our presenting sponsor is brought to you in part by Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Second quarter here from Upper Side of Valley. The Rams with an 8-0 lead over Delphi St. John's, but St. John's at the goal line. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen here with you. And um, how's it looking compared to what we thought this game was going to turn out, Dave? Yeah, and talking to the coaches this week, they talked about keys to the game. And for St. John's, it was no big plays to number five, Maddox Underwood. Well, they gave him some big plays in that first drive where Upper Side scored. And then secondly, they need to find consistency on offense. We're seeing that a little bit and then hit them hard. We're, we're from the Mac, let's hit them hard. And uh, let's see how this play uh, works itself out for St. John's. Second down and goal, ball on the goal line. And this is Boggs gonna take it himself. And the sideline judge has touchdown. So they will get it. It's a Kenton Moose touchdown for St. John's. So they close it within two points. Now, Drew Boggs, he does the kicking for St. John's with, with Upper Siena going with a two-point conversion. You have a decision if you're Coach Schulte. It looks like he's going to stay with the extra point here instead of going for two. So, interesting approach. Snap, hold, the kick is up, and it is good. Four seconds gone by here in quarter number two. It's eight to seven. Rams still on top. We'll be back. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken located in Wapak, Delphus, St. and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken. We're famous for catering, too. Our first down sponsor, Crit and Aerial Applications, provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Videos and information on our Facebook page, Crit and Aerial Applications. Patrick, that play, that drive was seven plays by St. John's with uh, Drew Boggs on a two yard run to finish it off. Took three minutes and 39 seconds and covered 29 yards. And if you are upper side of the valley talking about keys, and we'll see what Boggs does here, and we'll come back to those keys. Line drive, fielded at the 15-yard line. 
and has some space. That's Ryan Roberts. Roberts. Making it happen, and Roberts is going to put upper side of Alley in great field position as they will start from the Blue Jays 39. And that's exactly what Coach Dustin Price wanted to see. He wants his team to play physical, fast, and aggressive. Again, we saw it on their first drive. We see it on that kickoff return right there. Cash in when opportunity presents itself. Well, here's a big opportunity for Upper Sciota, Patrick. They get the ball on the return, and they have it clear over on St. John's side of the 50, and it'd be discipline on discipline. Know your role, play responsibility football. Let's see what Upper can do with this great opportunity. Underwood running the option. Is going to hang on to a nice cut inside out to the 35-yard line. A flag coming out at the end of the play. Back on the 41, and they're going to say holding against USV. Yeah, going around the edge like that, that's typically where you might see holding on a running play, and that is the case here. The referee from behind the play picks that one up. So based on where the flag was, they're going to put them all the way back to midfield. So that'll make it a, you know, it's just inside the 50. So first and 20 coming up for USV. So that negates that 45 yard kick return by Ryan Roberts. First and 20. And trouble. Underwood is dropped behind the line and it's Alex Heron getting back there once again and a flag comes out at the end of the play. And is this gonna be against St. John's for unsportsmanlike conduct? It looks like that might be the case. The, officiate, the officials are talking about it, but Alex Heron, he's blitzed twice in this game and both times he's been able to get to Underwood. But right now, that effort may be negated by the penalty. The, the blitz effort for, Blue, for the Blue Jays in this one has been phenomenal. They yes. have pressured him three times. They've gotten home twice. That's a, that's a great percentage on mm -hmm. blitzes. Mm -hmm. And you have to think, you know, if they, can, if they can keep that up, they can really make the Rams one-dimensional or at least make Underwood beat you with his arm. So it's going to be a dead ball, personal foul against the Blue Jays. So that is going to be a huge penalty in favor of Upper Side of Valley. Yeah. That was going to be at the 39-yard line Correct. of USV. Yes. They're going to move that ball. This is a 15 yards from where the play ended. Okay, so that will make it down to the 48. It's still quite a bit to cover, but. Yeah, it takes away the, the loss of yardage on the sack. Right, it would have been second down and Forever. 30, yeah, 31, <laughs> something like that. It's yeah. now second down and 18. Underwood swings it out to Roberts. And uh, Roberts taking it across the 45 to around the 42-yard line. They'll bring up a third down in about 12 for the Rams. Ryan Roberts, the 5'10", 180-pound junior. I like his spokeability out there. He just mm -hmm. attacked once he caught that football. He made a decision, and he was going to go as hard and as long as he could and make the white shirts bring him down. A nice play yards after the catch. Yak for Ryan Roberts. Trying to keep the drive alive. Probably four down territory here for upper side of Valley. Third and 13, ball on the 42, handoff. Trying to cut up the middle, getting out to the 39, and that is it. So they will get back to where this whole drive started and make it fourth and 10. We do see TJ Wirtz out there on defense as well. Did a nice job of playing disciplined football defensively right there. Came off the sideline and just made Roberts cut that one up into the defense. Did not give him the opportunity to break it around the end. Yeah. 
Again, as we mentioned, Upper Scioto Valley with the NWCC championship this year. That's their third NWC championship overall. Delphi St. John's, they've got 10 MAC championships underneath their belt. St. John's making their 21st appearance in the playoffs. Upper Scioto making their sixth playoff appearance. Metzger Financial Services time out on the field. We will take it as well. 9.24 to go here in the second quarter. Eight to seven Rams. We'll be back. Nine twenty-four to go here in the second quarter. Fourth and eleven officially for Upper Side of Valley. The Rams try and keep this drive alive. Blue Jays trying to force three and out. And they're thinking about punting it. Roberts is hanging on to it. Robert ball comes loose. St. John's is going to get it, and a flag comes out at the very end of the play. Yeah, and Roberts say, gets up, okay, that's a good sign. But we do have a flag, I'm guessing it might be holding and I bet St. John's is gonna decline it. <laughs> I would imagine you're right. Anything other than a first down was gonna be a St. John's yeah, maybe, ball anyway. Well, yeah, maybe it was the bean bag. Oh, I guess it was just a bean bag. I, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I thought I was a little better at di discerning <laughs> orange from yellow than I was last week, but I guess not. Well, St. John's is going to get the ball either way on that You're one. You're exactly right. He fumbled it, but he was stopped way behind the first down marker. Blue Jays at their own 43, first and 10. Trips, handoff. This is Mueller across midfield into plus territory down to the 40. Three yard line. That's a crit near applications first down. Hard running there by Mueller. Yes, Riley Mueller bumbling, stumbling, rumbling. And here comes St. John's with tempo up to the line. Just right up the middle. Nothing fancy about that. Here it is. Stop it. Upper Sciota unable to do so until he crossed the line of gain and picks up the first down. Fresh set of sticks in plus territory for the Blue Jays. High and flags all over the place as this will be a false start on the Blue Jays. Yeah, your blind grandmother even, even picked that one yeah. up right there, Patrick. Too much movement on St. John's side of the ball pre-snap. And at the snap, five yard loss. Ball on the 48, first and 15. Boggs back to pass, looking long, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted, as USV was all over it. Yeah, trying to pick up the number out there, great coverage. Our quarterbacks for the Rams, they're Hunter Damron and Andrew Kendall. Still can't pick up the number. The red number on the black shirt is sort of hard to see from our vantage point, but great defense right there. I thought possibly it was Caden Lowry, number six, but I okay. don't know that. Yeah. So it'll be second down and 15. Here's the handoff. Mueller looking for some space, finds some, finds a seam out across the middle to the 25 yard line and passed it for a crit aerial applications first down and a nice carry as he is just shy of the 20 yard line. Great run right there by St. John's. You gotta give credit to the lineman, your center, Camden Gable, your right guard, Logan Duncan, right tackle, Austin Arnold. Left guard, Alex Herod, and left tackle, Josh Mueller, the second team max selection. So ball in the 22. Gets it. Jet sweep. This is Tyler Lindemann looking for some space over there on that near side and didn't find any. Yeah, nicely done by the Upper Sayota Valley defense, stretching that one out. Mason Thompson and Maddox Underwood on the tackle. 
But St. John sees that Upper Scioto does a nice job of pursuing on the edge. Look for them to run the ball right back up the middle. They've had success with that on this drive. They certainly have. They have made a lot of progress just pounding the ball up the middle. Will they continue to do that? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. Second down and 10. Now this is Boggs looking to pass. Has time. Has a man. And the pass is intercepted. I believe that's Underwood. With space. Out to the 32-yard line and a big turnover for Upper Side of Valley. The defender for Upper, again, trying to pick up that number on the jersey. Did a great job just sitting back there. I do believe it's Underwood. Calls his own number on the interception. Great coverage, sees the ball, attacks the ball, picks it off, and the St. John scoring threat is thwarted. Now Upper with 7-10 to go in the second quarter. They're going to look to put a drive together, and Coach Price would love to eat a lot of clock in the process. So defense is both standing up here the last couple of plays. The Rams back at it on the 33-yard line. Yeah, I believe that pass was intended for Braden Pullman, but Max Underwood, he just sat back there and read it. Upper on offense. Underwood has it. Nowhere to go on first down. So second down and 10. The small school football, you got to be able to play both ways. We have several players doing that for both of these teams. Eight seniors on the roster for St. John's. They have eight players that go both ways for Upper Scioto. Seven seniors on a roster of only 24, and they have nine two-way players. See, when Upper Side of Valley had to change from offense to defense, they, yeah, not I don't a whole think lot anyone moved. Yeah, yeah, I think it was about the same, same kids. Underwood rolling, looking for space. Is going to try and run and uh, doesn't get anything. Might even lost a couple yards on that play. That'll bring up the third and long. And who's on the tackle? None other than number 24, Riley Mueller. Just the workhorse out there. He's been getting a lot of carries up the middle and then did a nice job of playing fundamental football. A great fundamental one-on-one -on -one tackle there to keep Underwood from picking up a positive game. It was uh, weeks ago, but I remember calling his name a lot when you and I did that game mm -hmm. against LCC on yeah. defense. On offense, too, but certainly on defense. Rams looking to move the chains here on third down. Nine, fix the handoff. Underwood running, throwing, pass complete at the 40-yard line, but will be short of the first down. Needed to get out past the 44-yard line. It was stopped at the 40. So it's decision time for Coach Price. You're on your side of the 50, fourth and four. I think you got to punt it away, but it doesn't really matter what I think, Patrick. It's what Upper Scioto does and what they're used to doing in this type of situation. But right now, it does look like going back to punt is Ryan Roberts. So I tend to agree with you. I, I'd rather, with the way my defense has been performing, I'd rather stretch the field and make the Blue Jays march on you. And it looks like they are going to punt. Oh, Roberts is going to throw it. It's he a fake, him. and it's moved to perfection. The pass completed out across. Bo Sanders getting it out, still on his feet to the 26-yard line. Ball comes loose. I think they're going to call it down. Yes. It will stay with upper side of Valley. Crit and area application's first down. And I don't think there's a flag. Nope, that's a beanie. Yeah, and I think that was Roberts to Mason Thompson, number four. What a, not a, well, it's a trick play. Yep. They were set up to punt, and they go with the fake punt, and he was wide open going right down the seam. Upper Sionna in business now with 425 to go here in the second quarter. Going to the, black of the back of the playbook to keep the drive alive, and now here is... Underwood will keep it on the RPO. He gets out to near the 20. 
Just a great play right there, that fake punt. And again, Upper Sayota, we've seen them in the first half do some things uncharacteristic of a number two team playing a number 15. Mm -hmm. They're saying, okay, we respect you, St. John's. We know that maybe there's some ways that we just don't want to go straight up with you. So we're going to do some things out of the ordinary a little bit. And it has worked for them to perfection here in the first half thus far. I said upper side of Valley again, not a traditional two versus 15 matchup. The Rams knew they were going to have their hands full in this one. And I think this is Underwood again on the carry. You know, this week on our WRSN podcast, um, the three wise men, Mason Underwood, or Mason Thompson and Maddox Underwood, were on the show, and it was very interesting to listen to them. Uh, viewers, if you have not checked out the WRSN podcast of Three Wisemen, please do so. It's very, very good, good talk about high school sports in a lot of ways. Third and four, ball in the 19. Underwood. Rolling out, pitching out. This is Roberts going to try and hit the corner. Does is going to have the crit and applications first down, and that'll put him in the Lodox Jewelry red zone. So the key of playing physical, fast, and aggressive that Coach Price wanted to see his team exhibit tonight, it has been on par here in the first half. Getting back to the three wise men, the three wise men are um, uh, Nate Garlock, Danny Holbrook, and Miles Holiday. Uh, three wise men most of the time. <laughs> and three wise guys more yeah, like it. And we've subbed in a couple times, uh -huh, and, yep. and that's taken the IQ down several they levels. <laughs> we've enjoyed it. It's been fun. They were really struggling for guests, so they had me on one week. and yeah. Yep. Likewise, likewise. Full start for Upper Side of Valley. So that'll back them back up to the 19. But yeah, I was very impressed with Mason Thompson and Maddox Underwood being on the, the podcast this week. Did a great job of representing their community, their school, their family, and themselves. Hmm. Now seeing how they can represent their football team on the field. Here's Underwood taking a high snap, cutting inside to the 15, round to the 13-yard line. Nice pick up on that play. Make a second down in about eight, I think. Yeah, this is a big part of the game right now. 2.30 to go in county. Momentum going into halftime one way or the other. Upper Sayota Valley, they're going to take the kick in the second half. They're going to receive it. Or no, they're going to be kicking off. St. John's Yeah, St. John's get the ball to start yep. the second half. Mm-hmm. Underwood's going to fake the handoff. He's going to stretch it out. Getting past the 10. Cuts inside He's the in. 5 and in for a touchdown. A Kenton Moose touchdown for Underwood. And the Rams extending their lead here with 2.01 to go in the first half. Nice job coming around the left side of that offensive line. Your left guard, Wyatt Helton. Your, your left tackle, your left guard, Hunter Richardson. Your center, Macon Underwood, Maddox's younger brother. But nicely done, blocking on the edge, giving Underwood an opportunity to get out in the open, and then he does the rest. Touchdown for Upper Side of Valley, and I think they're going to go for two again. This is something we talked about, uh, Dave, that the Rams might just be going for two, as I think has been their custom all season. Underwood flipping it inside into the end zone and gets it. But we do have a flag on the play. And it will be against upper side of Alley. That's a tough one right there. The illegal man down, ineligible receiver downfield. Where you get the ball at the three yard line, you have three yards of grace. So he must have been in the end zone. Well, yeah, yeah. Can't do that. So that's going to back him up and make it a much tougher. Uh, I would imagine two-point conversion try. So it was a nine-play drive that covered 67 yards, took five minutes and nine seconds, and Maddox Underwood finished it off for the TD. So they move the ball out to the nine, eight-yard line. Yeah. 
And we'll see if they can punch it in again for two points. Underwood rolling to his right. Has to go back the other way. Chased by Heron. Gonna tuck it and run and is gonna be in for the two point conversion. I thought he was stopped short. Yep. I think he rolled over a St. John's defender without hitting the ground and got in successfully for the two point conversion. So the two point conversion good. 201 to go here in the first half. It's a 16 to 7 upper side of Valley lead here on WOSN. Welcome back. Our uh, touchdown sponsor is the Kenton Moose. Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 and Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Just an outstanding drive by the drive by Upper Sioda there to get a touchdown. You know, they kick it out. Maybe we're seeing a little bit why they don't kick extra points here. St. John's will get the ball to start to 35. And one of the stats that's been thrown out, of course, is just how good the MAC is in the first round of the postseason. Their record is ridiculous. And most of the very small number of losses that they have are usually against other MAC teams. Correct. So they bring that mystique into this game against Upper Sayota Valley. And if you're a Rams fan right now, and if you're Upper Sayota Valley, you have to think, you know, even if they do score and it's 16 14 at the half, you have to feel pretty good, especially some of the upper side of the fans that I talked to. Having a lead of any kind at halftime would be a huge win for them. Absolutely, and the coaching staff, they're gonna be able to go into halftime regardless and talk about this is what we're doing well. Mm -hmm. We wanna to continue to emphasize that in the second half, and these are things we need to work on uh, to improve. So they have them re-kick, and that's a good idea by the Blue Jays, and they're gonna get the ball at midfield. Connor Gagne returning it to the 50. Roberts so, and Underwood on the tackle. So the Blue Jays will have 155 and an opportunity here to go back to back on possessions. As we mentioned earlier, they'll get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, they call it the middle eight, the last four minutes of the second quarter, the first four minutes of the third quarter, how critical it is right now. Upper side of the Valley owns the middle eight. They get a stop here before halftime. As we said, they'll be feeling really good going into halftime. Going into the locker room. So the Blue Jays coming out. They do have three timeouts as well, do the Blue Jays to work with. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time here for Delphi St. John's. Let's see what they do. A handoff to Mueller on first down. Mueller weaving through the traffic and bulldoze down to the 42 yard line. Again, they go right up the middle with Riley Mueller, and he always falls forward. Picked up a couple more yards just falling forward right there. Second and three, Boggs back to pass. Pressure coming, flushed out of the pocket. Is going to take off. No, he's going to pass it. Pass is oh. incomplete, almost intercepted. Boggs very close to the line of scrimmage, but did was behind it when he threw. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. He saw an open receiver, but it got deflected. But he could have picked up the first down with his legs and moved the chains, um, but made the decision to throw it. Fortunately, an incompletion if you're a St. John's fan. So three yards to go on third down. Lindemann in motion. Mueller will get the handoff on third down and the Rams defense came up strong, but it's gonna be close. I don't think he's got it. It's gonna be fourth and short and St. John's takes a Metzger Financial Services timeout with 117 to go here in the first half. Good tackle there by Doug May right there for the Upper Sayota Valley interior defense. And that, that'll be one thing that Upper Sayota talks about at halftime. St. John's has had success running the ball up the middle. They've got to make that adjustment. They have had that, and really both, both sides have had great success moving the ball up the field. It's been one of these interesting games because you think, okay, well, if the line play is a certain way, you're going to have struggles with running. You're going to have struggles with passing. Both these teams have been running really well, but the pass blocking has left a lot to be desired as neither quarterback has had a, a lot of time to throw back there tonight. Correct, correct. And, and having as many players as both teams have that play both ways, 
This looks to be a shootout as we get into the second half. The mm -hmm. players will get a little tired on defense and offense starts to show itself. We may have basketball and grass before this one's over. <laughs> Fourth down and a long one. Mueller going nowhere, is stopped at the 45. And the Rams with a big turnover on downs. And now it's upper side of Valley with the ball and a minute 12 to play. Yeah, minute 12, you've got two timeouts left. Why not play add-on right now if you're an upper side of the Valley player and team and fan and everybody else in, on this side of the field? They are going to look to put some points on the board. Now, they're not going to get too crazy here in the sense that if they have a turnover, an interception, they don't want to pick six. But you've got Maddox Underwood, and he's had an outstanding first half. Give him the ball and see if he can make a play. They might consult the back of the playbook maybe one more time. Yeah. Underwood keeps it. On the RPO, working outside. That is in the very front of USV's playbook. Out to the 48-yard line, just shy of the first down. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's at the front of the playbook. Now, let's see how fast they get up on the line here as the clock is running. Under a minute now. You're on St. John's side of the 50. Time to get greedy if you're upper side of the valley. I don't know why you don't at this point. 43 seconds to go. Clock running. Here it is, here it is. Philly special going to Underwood, pass is complete to the 30. There's no one there! Touchdown, USV! A Kenton Moose touchdown, back of the playbook, six more points for the Rams. You called it, Patrick. 53-yard game, or actually 47. They were on St. John's side of the 50. 47-yard pitch, pass, catch, and run to Painter. 22 to 7. Two point conversion coming up. And you know, if you get this one, it's like you've added an extra field goal <laughs> to the three touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. I am extremely impressed, not only with the physical play out there and the talent by Upper Side of the Valley, but their mental mindset. They came into this game ready to win. Underwood carrying it and is going to be stopped short of the two-point conversion. But it's six more points for the Rams. And with 30 seconds to go in the first half, 22 to 7, the lead for USV. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Our Red Zone sponsor, Lottox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lottox.com. You called it, Patrick. The back of the playbook, a trick play, the 47-yard pass completion for the score. Two plays that took 42 seconds, covered 56 yards in total, but the pitch to Roberts, and then he throws it back to his quarterback, Underwood, and it was off to the races from there. 22 to 7, 30 seconds remaining here. Ooh, St. John's, they've got some work to do at halftime. Blue Jays will get the football, and the approach uh, will be interesting. We'll see if they try anything yes. here or if they just down it. This is Gagne returning the kick, going out to the 43 yard line. But you're right now, with 22 seconds to go, ball on your own 43, how aggressive do you get if you're Todd Schulte? Todd Schulte in his 25th season, 193 and 122 overall. Dustin Price is eighth season in Upper Scioto Valley, 50 and 34. I mean, it, it's me, you've got nothing to lose. You're down 22 to seven. You've had a three and seven season. Take a shot, see what happens. Boggs lets it go, passes complete, out of bounds. First down, Braden Pullman with the catch. Yeah, that play only took five seconds, and you're going to move the chains, and now you're on the upper side of the valley, side of the 50. And again, you just want to stay aggressive. The defense is going to be out there all night with so many two-way players. Keep making them work. 
The 46, first down. Boggs looking, pass, pot, caught once again. Out there to the 22, Drake Fitro making the catch. And St. John's is going to take a timeout. And they will take it. Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it as well. 11 seconds to go here in the first half. 22 to 7, Rams on top. Jay's on the move. We'll be back. 11 seconds to go here in the first half. Blue Jays looking for something here. First and 10, ball on the Rams 28 yard line. Boggs back to pass. Flushed out. Takes off running. No, lets this one go. Pass is intercepted there at the two-yard line. Yes, Maddox Underwood, his second interception of the night, thwarts another St. John's drive. Do we have a flag on the play? I see the referee talking to one of his side judges. Uh, they might be looking at he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw the football. I mean, they're going to decline that. Yes. But at any rate, again, the Saint or the Upper Sarada Valley defense stiffens up here with three seconds to go. Obviously, deep in your own territory, if you're upper, you're just going to take a knee. And they do decline it, and it's Ram football. So forcing another turnover. There's because I'm I'm a little scrappy myself. There's part of me that says, take a shot. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love it. How much coaching have you done in your none. life? None. <laughs> none. None. No, no. The smart play is to run it, down it, go in the half. Yes. I understand that. Yes. I understand that. Yeah. But part of me's thinking, go for it. <laughs> A great half for Upper Side of Valley. They head into halftime with a 22 to seven lead over Delphi St. John. We will bring you the second half of this one. When we come back, you're watching high school football action on WOSN. Welcome back, third quarter about ready to get started. Our quarter sponsor is Path Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 22 to seven, Upper Scioto Valley on top of Delphi St. John's. Dave Bowen, Patrick Hamler here with you. Uh, Dave, I would say probably a little surprising for everyone that the Rams are doing as well as they are in this game. They're doing very well. Obviously, the ultimate, ultimate numbers on the scoreboard, 22-7, but the numbers on uh, statistics prove to bear that out as well. St. John's, Drew Boggs throwing the ball, four for nine for 44 yards, but he has two interceptions. Rushing St. John's 16 attempts, 88, 88 yards. Riley Mueller was 63 yards carrying the football. For Upper Scioto Valley, they've only thrown the ball five times. Maddox Underwood, two for three with a, a touchdown pass. And then Ryan Roberts, he's two for two, one on the fake punt and one on the flea flicker that he threw the ball back to Maddox Underwood uh, for a 47-yard TD strike. Rushing, Upper Scioto Valley, 21 attempts for 63 yards three yards per carry, and Maddox Underwood has 43 yards running the football. He's been the key. He has been slippery for St. John's to bring down, and uh, he has come to play tonight, and right now, Upper Scioto, they put together a second half. They can be looking at a second round football game. And we are underway here in quarter number three, and this ball is gonna stay in bounds. Fielded at the five, time for the Rams to close in, and that is what they do. Connor Gagne reels that one in. A nice coverage by Upper Scioto. St. John's deep in their own territory. At the 14-yard line, that's where the Blue Jays will start this first drive, and um, certainly probably not where head coach Todd Schulte thought his Blue Jays would be trailing 22 to seven at the half. Correct, and, and the halftime discussion, the adjustments, I think the main focus is responsibility football and defense. They've over-pursued, they've under-pursued, they've gotta stay in their lanes. 
And then offensively, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little smash mouth football from St. John's. They don't need to panic in any stretch of the imagination right now, but they've got to put some drives together and put the uh, Upper Scioto Valley defense on its heels. This is the handoff looking to Mueller there on first down, showing some shiftiness out of past the 30 yard lines. A flag comes down at the very end of the play. He'll be down at the 34 yard line. Good for a Critton Aerial Applications first down. A great run. That's what we're talking about. Smash Mouth straight up the middle. And, and uh, yeah. at a face mask. So at 15 yards at the end of the run. And he picks up right where he left the first half with 63 yards gained. Riley Mueller, that is. I think he's. we're going to see a steady dose of Riley Mueller carrying the football for St. John's. And if you're Coach Price, you're telling your team, we've proven nothing to anyone right now. we got to go out and continue to do what we do in the second half. So in one play, they've moved from the 14 to the 50. That's uh, very efficient there for Delphi St. John's and definitely what uh, <laughs> Coach Schulte wanted to see here coming out in the third quarter. A 36 yard gain. And Boggs will keep this one on first down, cutting through the defense and out past the 40 yard line. That's good for another Critton first down. Yeah, it's not rocket science. Drew Boggs straight up the middle. Coach Price, like I said, talking to his team, I'm sure he told him, we've proven nothing. We have to go out and establish ourselves here in the third quarter. We cannot be bored with success. we got to stay aggressive. That's been a key for us in this game and all year long. Be physical, fast, and aggressive. Moves the sticks once again, first and ten. This is Mueller again, getting the handoff. Picks up about five yards before he is pushed back. So the running game on point here so far in the third quarter for the Blue Jays. And again, it's neat to see how the St. John's players are responding to what Coach Schulte. You can definitely tell they haven't put the ball in the air, thought about it at all here on this first drive. Guys, we're going to go back to who we are, play fundamental football, and Let's execute and put the uh, defense at a disadvantage. Second down and five. TJ Wirtz now in the backfield for the Blue Jays. And this will be Boggs on the keep ball. Wirtz blocks and does a nice job of that out past the 30 yard line. And that's good for a Critton Aerial Applications first down. And again, another reason to go with the steady ground game. St. John's had two drives where they were moving the ball down the field and in interceptions. So they want to, again, uh, turnovers are a huge part of football. And in the first half, they turned it over twice. Not necessarily led to upper side scores. It just kept them from putting the ball in the end zone. To the ball, the 29-yard line on this efficient St. John's drive so far. Wirtz gets the handoff and par uh, carrying guys with him out to the 26-yard line. And you can see the up adjustment Upper Sayota is making now, uh, Patrick. They've got five down linemen on that last play. They're trying to load the box a little bit more, understanding what St. John's is trying to establish here on their first drive in the third quarter. Pickup of three on that play, second down and seven. A little bit of a hard count there, I think, trying to get maybe a five yards the easy way. Gagne in motion, will get the ball. Gagne working near side, has a breakthrough. First down, and then Summit dives into the end zone for the touchdown. Kenton Moose touchdown for the Blue Jays, and DSJ right back in it, 22 to 13. Yeah, punch, counter punch, a 26-yard touchdown run for Connor Gagne. They kept going up the middle, up the middle, up the middle, and then when St. John's brought every, or excuse me, upper brought everybody into the box, that left the flat susceptible. Connor Gagne, with that speed, gets around the edge and reaches pay dirt. 
So the 86 yard drive ends in six, maybe seven points. Snap, hold, kick is up, and it is good. 8.32 to go here in quarter number three. It's a 22-14 lead for USV. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. And our scoreboard sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken, we're famous for catering, too. For the Delphus St. John's Blue Jays, that was a six-play drive covering 86 yards, finished off by a 26-yard touchdown run by Connor Gagne, and it took three minutes and 20 seconds to complete. That adds to their rushing or their overall total yards in the first half. St. John's had 132, upper 168, upper Sayona Valley about to get the football. They've got to respond to that touchdown right there, that drive by St. John's. The ball will be fielded by Roberts at around the 19 yard line and he slipped there around the 30-yard line, so that's where the Rams will start. And a good start for the Blue Jays. You couldn't really have asked for much more from that first drive, and now they need their defense to step up. Yeah, it gets it back to a one-score differential as far as the game is concerned. The St. John's defense has got to step up. But Maddox Underwood and Ryan Roberts, they put on a show in the first half in the skill positions. It's going to be interesting to see what adjustments are made here and see if they can continue to do that here. Underwood in the gun will run it here on first down out to the 35 yard line before he has stopped. Nice five yard pickup on first down. Nice run around the right side of that offensive line again. Making Underwood, Maddox's younger brother at center, your right guard, Michael Ellerbrock and your right tackle, Doug May. This group of seniors for Upper Sayota Valley, winningest group of players ever to go through the football program. 35 wins and counting, hopefully, for Upper Sayota. Here's the handoff on second down is going to be just shy of the Critton Early Applications first down. Yeah, the senior class has been a terrific one for Upper Sayota Valley, and guys like Mason Thompson, Maddox Underwood have been starters since they were freshmen. You think, man, Maddox is... It's not like he's been here for years, but <laughs> yeah. it's because well, he's been here for four years and he's been on the field for all four years. Yeah, been here for four years. And I remember coaching against his father back in the day on the hardwood. So the Underwood name, definitely an Upper Sayota Valley name. And Maddox has continued to hold that tradition for his school. Trying to get one more win in their careers here. Here's Underwood taking this one. Credit narrow applications first down. He's pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Gagne in there on the stop, and we've got a flag back at the 45-yard line. What another outstanding designed play for Upper Sayota Valley. Looks like they're just going to go right up the middle, and Underwood fakes the handoff and goes around the left edge for a big game, but we're going to see if it counts or if it's going to all be negated and come back. Officials are talking. Only two of them have, uh, I think it's just those two there by the flag. They're at the USV 45. Well, They're now talking we got this over. Coming yep. in. Before you know it, we'll have everybody at the round Here table. Here they come. <laughs> yes. They must have heard me. Like, hey, guys. Yes. Uh, well, we'll get well, the call let's here. Let's see what we got here. And if they need to take the time to get it right, that's what we'll do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> William Horvath, the white hat. Oh, so it's going to be a personal, personal foul against USV. Yeah. So that takes away a great play on third and short. So it wasn't a dead ball foul, I don't believe. I don't think so. Because if it's not a dead, because if, it's, if yeah. it's a dead ball foul, they would just negate it from Correct. where the play yeah. ended. I saw the flag there at the 45-yard line right after Underwood went down. So I think it occurred during the play. 
So that is a significant loss. Not only do they not have the ball around the 36 yard line of St. John's, but it is going to be third and 10 at their own 30. Got to be smart and aggressive here for your upper Sayota. Back to pass, Underwood flushed again. Trying to work to the other side. In trouble, picks up a block, is just going to take off and run with this one and not getting very far to the 36 yard line, and that's it. And fourth down coming up. Yeah, fourth down, and you're going to be in a situation now where Roberts will go back to punt it, but it's not a sure thing that he'll actually use his foot in the game of football, which is primarily played with the hands. <laughs> But I do think uh, it's favorable that he will punt this one away and Upper Sayota will ask their defense to go out there and control things just like St. John's did on this particular drive. The comment reminds me of what my wife thinks of professional wrestling, people with no <laughs> pants fighting over a belt. Here's Ryan Roberts <laughs> kicking it off. This will be a punt. And it goes out of bounds. And they'll mark it at the 40. Well, he's walking up. Uh, midfield, I think, is where he's going to go. So that's a, a brief punt. And St. John's will take over at midfield. It is the most unique situation right now. Momentum clearly on St. John's side of the field, scoring on their first drive and then holding Upper Sciota on their first possession. Yet St. John's is down eight points. Mm -hmm. But right now, I feel like Delphus is starting to impose their will here. We said they didn't need to panic on that first drive. They were methodical. And again, I'd be very surprised, unless they absolutely have to, that they'll put the ball in the air and we got a timeout. Metzger Financial Services timeout by St. John's. 5.49 to go here in quarter number three. We will step away as well. 22-14 USD on top here on WOSN. Delphi St. John's ready to start their next drive at midfield. First and 10. Jays 50 yards from potentially tying this one up after being down 22 to seven at the half. Here is Boggs with the carry on first down. Keeps his feet, has the Critton Aerial Applications first down. And a rugby scrum breaking out there out across the 35 yard line. It'll be dropped at the 33. Good blocking by the offensive line. Upper Sayota Valley in that 5-2. They're neutralizing the defensive linemen and then your linebackers, Ryan Roberts and Mason Thompson. They've got to pursue the ball carrier a little harder without letting Drew Boggs get by them. Chuck plays right now for St. John's. The 34. And once again, trying to get the Rams to jump. Credit to the Rams front. They have not really bitten on those at all tonight. Not at all. High snap Boggs using all of that frame to corral it and gets maybe a yard and that's it. Thank goodness Drew Boggs is 6'1", because I don't think a six footer hangs onto that football. Correct, nice job for, by the left side of that defensive line for Upper Sayota Valley. Doug May and DJ Little, along with, as the aforementioned linebackers, Ryan Roberts and Mason Thompson. Try and get St. John's behind the sticks a little bit. Second and long. Ball on the 33, nine yards to go, 435. And counting on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Boggs back to throw, in trouble, flushed out. Still looking to throw and it's gonna be sacked for a loss back past the 40, down to the 42 yard line. Great a pursuit by Upper Sayota Valley right there. Both at the point of the attack behind uh, the line and then on the scramble. Great job defensively in two plays in a row, Upper Sayota Valley. They've neutralized this offensive 
uh, prowess that St. John's has displayed in the second half. So third and 18 for the Blue Jays. Ball in the 42, they've got to get it to the 25. Boggs looking to throw once again. Flag comes out at the 43-yard line. Boggs lets this one go and almost intercepted once again. Caden Lowry gets his hands on it. And I think this is going to be a hold against the Blue Jays. Hold, and then I'm not so sure that Drew wants to cross the line of scrimmage again. And I think they may have dropped one down here at the bottom. Yeah. I think there's another, yeah, there's going to be another penalty, I think, like you said, Dave, of uh, Boggs was over the line again when he threw the ball. And I believe that's a loss of down, so you'll take that penalty and, de and decline the holding. Putting St. John's in fourth down, I would think. We'll see. So there's the hold. Yeah, they're going to decline, decline the holding. That. Yeah. In that legal forward pass. Loss it down. Makes it fourth and 18 for St. John's. Uh, it should be more than that. Don't they lose yardage? Five yard loss. I think. Yep. They so they make a fourth and 23. Yep. yep. Okay. Drew Boggs is set up to punt the ball away. Ryan Roberts back. We'll see if they punt it or if Roberts Blue Jays wants to show yeah. their bag of tricks. Yeah. Roberts and Thompson back for Upper Sayota. Gets the punt off. And it's going to roll, take a few Blue Jays bounces, and it'll be inside the 10. So Upper Sayota Valley, they neutralized St. John's on this second drive. St. John's marched right down the field on their first drive of the third quarter to cut the lead to eight. Maddox Underwood now, the all-everything quarterback for Upper Sayota Valley. He's the glue guy for this team. He's been a true leader. He's led by example as well as verbally. And uh, Coach Price said, I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. He's, he's our best player as well. When your best player, who is also your hardest worker, comes to the, the field ready to go, you, you put yourself in a position to have a great season. And right now, Upper Sayota needs a great drive. Option out to Roberts. Roberts back inside of the 14 yard line. Because as we said, right now, Upper Sayota Valley has neutralized the momentum that St. John's established here in the third quarter. They can go down and score. Big Mo will definitely be back on their side of the ledger and they'll ha have themselves a two uh, score advantage and make things very tough for St. John's in the fourth quarter. Winner of this game will get the winner of Calvert Harden Northern, which it looks like it is going to be Calvert. So if USV hangs on to win this one, they will get another home game. If it's the Blue Jays come from behind, they will uh, be on the road to Tiffin next week. Is that out across the 15 yard line? They'll bring up third down. A big play in this game right here, Patrick. Third and three. Both, both sides, huge play. The upper can convert, keep the drive alive, keep munching away yardage and the clock. And St. John's give themselves an opportunity to get the ball back and keep attacking this upper Sayota Valley defense. Pressure ratcheting up for both sides. Third and three. Ball on the 16 and a false start. Make it third and eight. Yeah, I believe that was number 73, Wyatt Holton Helton. Jump just a little bit. It's been air free football mm -hmm. in a lot of ways on both sides tonight. There haven't been many flags, and when there have been flags, it's been out in the open field a little bit more, not on the line of scrimmage for both teams. Every once in a while, you see an offensive lineman will move, and then who, who me? Was it me? <laughs> did, I, did I do it? <laughs> not that Hel time. Helton, to his credit, yes. moved and then hit his helmet. Like, oh, yes. it was me. I knew yeah. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here it is, third and eight. Underwood rolling out. Nice. Pass is complete. First down and then some to Bo Sanders for a crit aerial applications first down. That was a beautiful rollout and a pitch and catch from Underwood to Sanders. Sanders just a sophomore. 
nicely done. Great execution for a big first down for the upper side of the Valley Rams. Younger brother of Alex Sanders, I think, who was a standout here at USV for many years. Yeah, and I believe dad is Travis, and I coached against Travis when he was a player. <laughs> So the ball on the 27, first and 10. Underwood will run with it. Not getting much, stopped at the 30. Couple of yards, that's it. Jackson Hurston on the tackle right there. Big arms right there, swallowed up, Underwood. Two yard gain, second down. 43 seconds and counting remaining in the third quarter. Setting up what should be an exciting fourth quarter here at Upper Side of Valley. And Wood swings it out, and Roberts, I think he slipped down there at the 25 yard line, so he's going to pick up, or I'm sorry, lose some yardage. And third and long coming up for the Rams. Yeah, they find themselves right where they were just a couple plays ago. Third and long, they converted them. You don't have a whole lot of plays in your playbook for third and 13. But tonight, Upper Santa Valley, they've been using every part of the playbook, and we've got a timeout on the field. That is the end of the third quarter. It is 22 to 14, Upper Santa Valley on top. Fourth quarter coming up when we come back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our fourth quarter is brought to you by Pat's Donuts and Cream. Visit any of our four area locations, including our new location at 600 South Cable Road next to LCC, open daily. And our first down sponsor is Critton Aerial Applications, providing you with custom liquid and granular crop applications from all our innovative drone system. Videos and information on our Facebook page, Critton Aerial Applications. 12 more minutes to go in this first round matchup between USB and Delphi St. John's. The Rams on top of the Blue Jays, 22 to 14. Patrick Hamler, Dave Bowen here bringing you the action. A wonderful November evening. No snow, no rain, so we'll take it. Yep, time to start decorating the turkeys. Put all the Halloween stuff away. We're in November. <laughs> Thank you for not mentioning that it's Christmas time yet. No. Because it is not. No, it is not. Third and long. Underwood pressured again. Steps, throws, looking sideline. Pass incomplete. Gagne in there on the stop. Pass intended for Thompson, and that'll be fourth down. Yeah, Maddox Underwood did about all he could right there. The pursuit from St. John's pushed him out of the pocket. Comes over to the sideline and puts it only where his receiver can get it. St. John's knocks it away, and Upper's going to have to punt this one now and let their defense toe the line for them, a defense which only has given up 8.9 points per game this season. Hard to imagine them not punting this. Indeed, that is what will happen. And it's going to roll, but not very much. Down to the 46, between the 46 and the 47 yard line. So the Blue Jays will have a short field as they will make another attempt to try and tie this one up. Yeah, upper side of the valley, their defense, as we said, 8.9 points per game. They have two shutouts on the season. Offensively, they've had seven games of 30 points or more. St. John's in their three wins, they scored 54, 27, and 40. So when they get it going against mm -hmm. an opponent, they're pretty good. Um, but they've given up more than 20 points six times. But this is a good old, good one right now. Just good, solid football. It's a Donnie Brook, and let's see how it plays out, Patrick. Again, I think we'll see. Works is in the backfield, and Riley Mueller's going to need to get some touches too, but I think we'll see St. John's try and go between the tackles. I think you're right. This is Wirtz. will take the carry first and 10. Uh, 
I thought he was going to be stopping the 40. He kept going, and they'll just uh, blow this one dead at the 37-yard line. And something that we've seen is the, the Blue Jays have had that advantage running the football, and you think unless there's a third and long or some type of you know situation when they get back behind the sticks, you think, man, we're just going to pound the rock and, and mm -hmm. live with the results. Yeah, and conversely, you can say Upper Santa is going with a bend but don't break philosophy. Try and keep things contained a little bit, but you got to get the – the, the long the long uh, play that try and get St. John's behind the sticks a little bit. That was a great run by TJ Wirtz. Again, we saw him early in the season and he was injured in week three. Boggs is going to throw it. Play action. Boggs opens this one up. Has a man caught and no. It is caught. Touchdown. Boggs and then caught it. Bringing that one in is Braden Pullman for the Kenton Moose touchdown. Just a great play. Everybody in the stadium thinking St. John's is going to play smash mouth football because that's what they've done. But the first pass of the second half is a 37-yard touchdown pass from Drew Boggs to Brian Pullman. Looks like a Braden Pullman. Braden Pullman. Me. I think I think that was just a simple little post route, yep. wasn't it? Yeah. Finds the space and gets there. They're going to go for two and try to tie this one up. Blue Jays picking their spot to be aggressive, and it pays off. Boggs to Pullman, and now trying to put two on the board. Boggs in trouble is going to be stood up and stopped, so the Rams will maintain the lead. They tried to find something there up the middle again, but the upper side of Valley defense, they threw Drew Boggs around like a toss salad at Olive Garden right there. Nothing for him. Upper Sayota is going to stay with the two-point lead here with 10.48 left in quarter number four. Bob's certainly not treated like family on that play. 10.48 to go here in the fourth quarter. It's a two-point lead for USV. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. That scoring drive for St. John's took all of 55 seconds, three plays, 46 yards, 37-yard touchdown pass from Boggs to Pullman. Ball fielded by Roberts around the 20-yard line and ran east quite a ways. Before turning the ball up, he gets out to about the 28-yard line. So a 22-7 lead for the Rams has turned into a 22-20 lead for Upper Side of Valley. And this is very similar to what we saw in their week one loss where they had a lead against Ada. They held it for the vast majority of the game. And then at the very end, Ada came back, made some plays, and took the lead with very little time left and held on for the win. And so far, Delphi St. John's kind of repeating that very similar pattern, a pattern that the Rams would like to stop uh, here and now. Yeah, you're exactly right. In this episode of Valley football team, they've had two close games. They lost that game to Ada, and then they won a three overtime thriller against Waynesville Goshen. Underwood will keep it on first down out to the 29, and that's it, second down. Interior defense for St. John's. Johnny on the spot. Everybody met, as you said, right there at the 29. It was a student council meeting. <laughs> Nothing happening there for Upper Scioto Valley. St. John's lost to uh, LCC 14 to 13, and all of their other scores have been by a touchdown or, or more either winning or losing. So we got a tight one here. Pitch fumble, Roberts gets on it and then picks it up and then will lose additional yardage. He's down at the 20 yard line. Alex Heron on the tackle. We haven't seen, you know, it's been clean football by both teams as well as far as negative plays. They haven't had many of their own doing, unforced stairs, but right there, Upper Scioto with the fumble in the backfield, and then St. John's, they keep anything positive from happening. 
Makes it third and 16. So once again, a third and long the Rams have to navigate. Hard to come up with a trick play in this situation, <laughs> Patrick. Deep in your own end. Starting to tighten up. Here's the nice screen, screen pass set up very nice, but not going anywhere as Thompson is stopped out just past the 26 yard line. And who's there? Riley Mueller. Mueller having a heck of a game he on both sure sides is. of the football. He sure is. So fourth and 12. And Upper's gonna have to ask their defense to bow their back a little bit. Again, offense has not been able to get anything going in the second half. Roberts puts this one. And that will bounce around to the 42 yard line. So a little bit longer of a field for the Blue Jays. And now Delphi St. John's will have the football with a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. 22-20 USV on top. It has been a tale of two halves tonight. Upper Sayota Valley able to do a lot of things offensively, a little razzle-dazzle in the first half, but then some just hardcore running and Maddox Underwood making some great decisions. And then the second half, as we said, Possibly the adjustment for St. John's go a little more smash mouth and it's worked for them. And their defense has stepped up. And also cleaning up the turnovers. No, yes. no yes. Uh, interceptions or anything uh -huh. like that as well in this half. Boggs swings it out. Pass complete to Gagne. Gagne makes the guy miss. Look at the speed. Crittenary and the first down. Has some blockers to the 30. Out of bounds, or I'm sorry, tackled at the 15 yard line. Good for a critical aerial applications first down. That'll put him in the Lodox Jewelry Red Zone. Looks like that's a 43 yard gain for Connor Gagne. Connor Gagne, a guy who in week five last year had a severe knee injury, and he is just really, really putting on a display with his athleticism out there tonight, and he's had a great year all season long. That might be Gagne down right now. I think they're hopefully just working on a cramp. We'll step away, take a timeout. 8.13 to go. Two-point lead for the Rams. We'll be back. Welcome back. 8.13 to go in the fourth quarter. Blue Jays on the march in the red zone. Ball on the 13, first and 10. Riley Mueller in the backfield with Drew Boggs. St. John's looking to take the lead for the first time. Here's Boggs on the keeper, trying to get there, and he does for a Kenton Moose touchdown. The Blue Jays on top for the first time tonight. A 13-yard scamper by Drew Boggs behind the right side of that offensive line. He reaches pay dirt, and as you said, St. John's takes the lead. 26-22. The numbers the, report says go for two when you're up four. That's what they're going to do. Try to go up by six points. A rather large contingent of the coaching staff were for St. John yeah. trying to bring the play in. And they. Yeah, I think they want the ball. Oh, they're checking the, the ball hash. spot. Yeah. I think Coach Schulte said, nobody asked me where I wanted it. And I do so, think, no. Nope. So Metzger, financial services timeout. So St. John's will take it. They'll have one timeout remaining. We'll take it as well, 7.52 to go. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Our Red Zone sponsor is Lodox Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at lodox.com. And our presenting sponsor, this game brought to you in part by Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. Two-point conversion on the way for the Blue Jays as they will try to go up by six points. 
their first lead of the night. Wirtz in the backfield along with Mueller. And Boggs will keep it. Gets the blocking inside of the five and will take it in for the two point conversion to give the Blue Jays a 12, 28 to 22 lead in this one, 746 to go. We'll be back here on WOSN. Seven forty-six to go in the fourth quarter. Blue Jays have taken their first lead of the night, 28-22 over Upper Scioto Valley. Yeah, two-play drive covering 58 yards, cover, taking 33 seconds. St. John's following the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. Drew Bog scores on a 13-yard run to his right, and then he scores going to his left in a play that's very similar to what uh, St. John's would run a lot back in the day when they were winning state championships. Pitch the ball to the quarterback, have the running backs and the guards pull and block for him. What do we got, Patrick? Got us a 28-22 game and the official tying his shoes. Okay, I thought you picked something up out there that had some concern about. The, well, the score had not been changed okay. yet. It still said 26-22 okay. on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. So I wanted to make sure that they actually did score the two point conversion yeah, and that I wasn't crazy. You're, well, you're I mean, not, yeah. I am crazy, but <laughs> that I wasn't seeing things. There we there go. You go. I wasn't there seeing you things. Go. You're not crazy either. <laughs> <laughs> Fielded the kickoff, Roberts. It wasn't Roberts, rather, but the ball down at the 25 yard line. And now the Rams are going to try and. Is that Maddox Underwood and he's hurt? Number five? Official timeout. I really can't see. But there was a very strong reaction from one of the linemen as to who was down and injured. And I think you might be right, Dave. I think that might be Maddox Underwood who is injured right now. And that would be a significant blow. We're going to step away with 7.40 to go. We'll be right back. Back to action here with 7.40 to go in the fourth quarter. And Maddox Underwood is out being looked at on the sideline or checked out on the sideline. Obviously with that young man being such a large part of the offense, that is a significant concern to how USV will prosecute the final 7.40 of this game. Yeah, they'll look to get him back as safely as they can. He ran off the field, that was a good sign. Indeed it was. This is, I believe, Roberts taking it out to the 30 yard line. And I believe Mason Thompson is in at quarterback now. I think you're right, Thompson. But here comes Maddox Underwood. Has experience and there we go, Caden Lowry. Well, I was just about it to say Caden Lowry, Lowry yep. is, uh, Another quarterback on yep. this squad, so he will come out and Underwood back in there. So Lowry does his job, hands it off, and they get a pickup of five. Again, a big drive here for Upper Side of the Valley. I know momentum is on St. John's side of the field, but if Upper can get something going here. Underwood throws, complete, out to Sanders, the 35 yard line, ball comes out, and it's Blue Jay football. Bo Sanders trying to pick up another yard and then he got hit hard, coughed it up. So the turnovers which plagued St. John's in the first half, that's a big one in this game going against Upper Scioto Valley. Well, that's the second fumble of the night for Upper Scioto Valley. The one they had in the first half didn't hurt so much. It was on fourth down and Blue Jays are gonna get the ball back anyway. This one, Huge derailing a drive and giving the ball back to Delphi St. John's deep in their own or deep in uh, the Ram territory with 6.52 to play. Yeah, they want to put another score on the board and get a two score advantage. Exactly what Upper Scioto Valley had established in the first half. Blue Jays have scored 21 unanswered points, looking to add to that. And this is Mueller. Getting the handoff out to the 31-yard line. 
And yeah, this is where if you're St. John's, you definitely want to just play smash mouth football. Yeah, you're in four down territory. You average three yards per carry. You're going to get a first down. Not be in a hurry and just break the will of these upper side of Valley Rams who have played so well tonight. It will be interesting to see how Delphi St. John's approaches this because this is a team, again, three and seven in the regular season. They didn't have a lot of opportunities to do this, to run down a clock and, and you know, choke the life out of a team, for lack of a better phrase. It'll be interesting to see how they approach this. Here's Boggs. will keep it on second down, now past the 30 to the 28-yard line. Another high snap from his center, Camden Gable. Reels it in and picks up positive yardage. So two downs to pick up three yards if you're St. John's. Third and three. So Riley Mueller checks out of the game. Lindemann is in there. He trips to the right. And so is TJ Wirtz. Could be a handoff to Wirtz. Could be setting up a bubble screen. I just don't think St. John's will be too fancy here. No reason to be. And they're just going to hand it straight up to Wirtz. And he will get to the 25. I think he got to the 25. Yeah, he's right at the first down marker, the line to gain. Let's see what they they call here. They're going to say he's just short. They're going to mark him short of the 25, which and will be short of the first down. And we're going to have the rarity uh, of all rarities. You just don't see it very often anymore. They're no. going to bring the sticks out. I was going to say, I don't think the – I've seen the chain gang come out at all this year. Mm -hmm. They just kind of yeah. they just kind of eyeball it, go, eh, close enough, move the sticks. I still think there will come a day where technology will allow us to have a laser that comes across the field, and they, if it touches the football, then – but, right. you know, but the guy, the chain gang, they need to get some exercise in too. Right. We need to bring them out a little bit. Let them get a little face time here. But the laser would take the drama out of it. You well, don't have the, the seconds while they jog out there. Maybe they stretch it out. out. Maybe you have a countdown. And Maybe, you go, yeah. And when you flip the switch to turn it on. He's just short. More than a few chain links for sure. Mm -hmm. So fourth down and, uh, as you said, four downs to get those yards. And I can't foresee St. John's not going for it, trying to keep the football and just – Kind of drain the clock here yes. in the final 453 of this one. Can the Rams get a stop? Fourth and one. Ball on the USV 26. Clock blown in, 450 to go. And trying to get the Rams to jump once again. And USV has not taken the bait all night. And this is Wirtz on fourth down, and he has stopped. Great penetration right there by number 28, DJ Little. And that took away the footing for TJ Wirtz. And you're right, stuff is the correct word. New life for Upper Sierra Valley. Had to get to the 25 and did not. So USV getting the stop on defense. That puts some life in the USV crowd, and now with 4.34 to go. And with Maddox Underwood, you're always only one play away. That's right. From breaking it. Underwood will keep it himself to the 26. TJ Wirtz in on the tackle. We talked about a lot of guys going both ways, and as we as we said, when they switched, there weren't a lot of kids that came off and on. It Correct. was pretty much the same group. And the other thing you have to do, TJ Wirtz, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You just didn't get the first down. If he's hesitating at all, or, you know, thinking about that last play at all, he's not there on that play right That's there. That's right. So you got to let it go. You got to stay in the now. TJ Wirtz does an outstanding job of it right there. So you didn't get that first down, but good news, you get to hit somebody on the next play. <laughs> <laughs> Underwood, play action. 
Stands in the pocket, lets it go. Sanders with the catch out to the 50 yard line for a crit and aerial application first down and hangs on to the football. And I may not be correct, but it seems to me this is the first time, and I guess we're gonna mark it on upper side of the 50, first time this half that they are on the other side of the 50 and they still aren't. So we'll see how this plays out. They're as close to it as they've ever been, I think, <laughs> exactly. in, this, in this second half. Yeah, I think if that's the goal line, it's a touchdown. <laughs> Nose of the football on the 50. Hand off. Roberts looking, we'll get it across the 50 to the 49 yard line, gain a one on the play. On the tackle for St. John's, it was Alex Martz and Josh Mueller. Talked to uh, one of the members of Upper Side of Valley's fan base and said that they are scrappy. And we've seen well, it opportunity tonight. to see that yep. more tonight. Here is Underwood on the option, pitches it out to Roberts and is gobbled up in the backfield. Made it a about a two yard loss. It was looking like a four or five yard loss. Great pursuit by the St. John's defense. Stretches that play out and then just nowhere else for the running back to go. Makes it third and 10. I'm not gonna say that this drive is the last one that's, that Upper Sioux Valley will have in this game, but it's gonna be close. Big play again, third and 10. Don't necessarily need to get the first, but you gotta make fourth down very manageable. Third and long for the Rams, 2-10 to go. Underwood backing up, rolling out, looking downfield, is in trouble. He gets out of it, still on his feet. He's scrambling. Let's this one go, looking long, passes almost intercepted. Connor Gagne in there on the stop, and then he was thrown to the ground. Yeah, Ryan Roberts helmet ended up, first. Yeah, Ryan Roberts ended up playing defense because Gagne had almost a sure interception, but Roberts breaks it up. Fourth and ten. You got to go for it, don't you? Uh, yeah, you have to. I think 152 to go. You do have all three timeouts. St. John's only has one timeout left here. I think so, you take a time out here maybe to talk about it. Make sure you have your best play out there. And St. John's is going to take the time out. That is their last one. So 152 to go in this one. So we'll we'll keep this here for the moment. The Rams down six, 28-22, fourth and 11 to go. And uh, here's a scenario. if. If you don't get fourth down here, it's not the end of the world. Blue Jays get the football back, but you have all three of your timeouts. Correct. So you can still get the football back, but you got to get stops. You got to get stops. And, and again, I think St. John's will run the football if that ends up being the case. You can stack the line a little bit, but if you're upper side of the valley, you want to convert this fourth down and keep the ball in your possession. Get it. <laughs> again, we're really not on. St. John's side of the 50, but this is a play where if you can get the first down and start getting momentum play downhill, you might be able to punch this in and win it at the end. And if you look at where Upper Side of Valley has had success, it really has been, you know, we, we, we make kind of some jokes of, you know, back of the playbook type stuff, but yeah. the unorthodox plays mm -hmm. are what have allowed Upper Side of Valley to have a 22-7 lead at one point. So you have to think at some point you're gonna to have to get exotic if you're gonna win this game. Fourth and 11, ball on the 49. Here we go, yeah, yeah. just what I was it. talking about. Underwood letting it go on fourth down, intercepted. Alex Heron coming down with it. Alex Heron with the interception. You can run the trickery, but you still gotta make sure it's there and it never was. But you, you were right, they got to the back of the playbook. Just wasn't able to execute it. St. John's first and 10, minute 45. Now it's the second scenario. This game isn't over. 
Upper Siona Valley, you gotta keep your heads up and lock in defensively and try and get a three and out. You can kill the clock with timeouts. Still opportunities, as you said, for the Rams. They can get the football back. They have got to stop the Blue Jays from getting a first down. Blue Jays get a first down, it is pretty much over. I think we're gonna see a heavy dose of Drew Boggs running the football, Riley Mueller and TJ Wirtz. Those three gentlemen in the backfield and it's gonna be about ball security as well. Everybody within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage for Upper Side of Valley. Here is Mueller on first down and he has stopped behind the line and timeout will be taken by Upper Side of Valley. I believe that was Caden Lowry penetrated through the middle there. And that tackle is behind the line of scrimmage. So the Rams will take the timeout. We will step away and take the timeout as well. 140 to go in the game. A six point lead for the Blue Jays. We'll be back. Welcome back to tonight's game is brought to you in part by Rural First, the leader in rural lending. Rural First can help you live closer to what matters. And our scoreboard tonight brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken, we're famous for catering too. 28-22, the Blue Jays on top of the Rams. Blue Jays with the football and can salt this one away with a first down. Second down and 10 coming up for DSJ. Gagne gets the football, swinging it around, trying to use that speed and got a few more yards there than I thought he was gonna get. Did not go out of bounds, that's the key right there. They run right. the jet sweep and I'm sure the last thing Coach Schulte told Connor Gagne is do not go out of bounds, stay in bounds. That's more valuable right now than picking up another yard or two. The Rams taking a timeout there second. They'll bring up third down and six. So the winner of this game will advance to the second round and they will take on the winner of either Hard Northern or Tiffin Calvert. Uh, looks like it's gonna be Calvert. The last score that we saw was 34-13 Calvert uh, at halftime, so if uh, St. John's hangs on for the win. They will be traveling up to Tiffin next week. If the Rams come back and win this one tonight, they will host Tiffin Calvert here at Upper Side of Valley next week. Yeah, still a minute 33 to go, but St. John's number 46 being out there again, TJ Wirtz, it's had to have been uh, an emotional uplifting piece for this team. Such an outstanding young man and an offensive and defensive threat for them. T.J. Wirtz, obviously, he was not 100% tonight, but he has been out there for his team, and uh, this second half, they have really responded to his being out there and fighting for uh, the Blue Jays. Ball in the 43, third and six. Two receivers bunched, Mueller in the backfield, two receivers wide as well. Gagne in motion, long pitch, gonna stretch it out to Mueller. A flag coming out as Mueller is stopped at the 41 yard line and we'll I think see what the flag is about. The edge. I think Ryan Roberts was held and that's gonna push it back, but it's a big decision. I think if you're upper side of the valley, you're gonna think about denying this because it'll make it fourth down. So you got the stop. Yeah. And the clock stops. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think you're right, Dave. I think you 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 decline this. Play, yeah, yeah, you decline this. You bring up fourth down, and you get St. John's to I'm gonna imagine punt. I, I can't yeah. foresee them going for fourth no. down here in this situation. Yeah, your defense has held Upper Scioto Valley to no points here in the second half. There's no reason to try and go for it here on fourth down. Punt it away and let your defense continue to do what it's done here the whole second half. And then we talked about Upper Sarita Valley, they could have an opportunity to get the ball back and it looks like that's gonna be the case. So they will decline the penalty after the two yard loss and the Rams will take their final timeout. 
as we get ready for fourth down. Well, did you know you can stream the WOSN channel anytime, anywhere for only $8 a month? You can download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. You know, if you're Coach Price right now, you're telling your team, let's have a, a great defensive stand here on this punt. Let's make sure they punt it away. Let's feel it and see what we can get. But gentlemen, if you said we're in a position where we could win this game on the last drive, where else would you be? Where else would you rather be? And that's a, that's going to be the case right now for the upper side of the Valley Rams. You got to let the second half sort of go away. You got to have a short memory and just get yourself established for one drive. Seniors, this is one drive for you to put upper side of the Valley into the second round of the playoffs. You know, I think you're right. If you would have told Coach Price, hey, look, you're going to get the ball, minute 30, chance to win, would you take it? He'd say, absolutely. Yes. No mm -hmm. doubt in my mind, he says, absolutely. Coming after it, high snap, and they do get the punt off. Fielded oh. and touched. They will keep it, however. Upper side of Valley had a chance to return it, and uh, they get a little bit out of it, so, oh my goodness. Yeah. Down to the 41 yard line, and if you are uh, again, if you are sitting watching this game, <laughs> I don't know how you are at this point. Yeah, again, I believe that was Maddox Underwood that picked that up and took it around the left side. <sighs> He's coming over here. Maybe. No, it's I not thought Maddox. it was I thought it was Hunter Dameron who yeah. picked it up, but. Yeah, number eight. Yeah, he's yep. coming off. He did a really nice job for his team right there. That ball was just sitting there. Now we go on the 40-yard line, 60 yards to advance for Upper Scioto Valley. Rams with no timeouts. Underwood pressure coming. In trouble going nowhere. It's Alex Heron once again at the 25-yard line for a huge loss. And the clock keeps running, going down to a minute remaining. Comes from the right side, the outside linebacker position does Alex Heron. The one thing you couldn't do if you were Maddox Underwood is keep the ball right there, but he didn't have much time at all to think about alternatives. I don't know that Heron was touched on that play. And he's set up out there again. Here he comes. Down to 45 seconds. They it's swing it out. Pass. It is. Roberts going long, and that one is going to go uh, gonna go out of bounds. It's incomplete, intended for Mason Thompson, who had a shot at it, and I think that was just great defense there. Braden Pullman knocking that out of his hands. Yeah, Thompson and Pullman, they were hand fighting a little bit. Good no call. Nope, no nope pass interference there whatsoever, but Thompson unable to come down with it. That would have been a huge play. And I'm... Upper Scioto is used so much out of the back of the playbook. I don't think it's the back of the playbook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting I, to think it's yeah. maybe halfway through the playbook at yeah. this point. Yes, exactly. And they've executed a lot of the, the trick plays, if you will. Uh, but unfortunately, that one falls in. There's not a lot in the playbook for third and 23. And that's what they have. And Thompson in trouble once again is going to run and throw this one up in the air and intercepted by the Blue Jays. Ball comes out, but Delphi St. John's falls on it, I think. Yeah, everything's just sort of stopped over there right now, both ways. Blue Jay football, and that Connor will salt Gagne. this one away. Connor Gagne making the catch, the interception on that play, and that will wrap this one up. A flag comes out at the very end of the 44, but this is really only going to be a matter of uh, where the Blue Jays run out the clock. And you know, we've talked about Riley Mueller a lot tonight. We've talked about Drew Boggs a lot tonight, but you know, Connor Gagne has had some big plays right now. He's been out there all night long. He's been on all night long, just like your porch light, Patrick and he picks up the interception right there. Well, you look at it too, and the number of guys that we've mentioned, and that's the thing, there have been a lot of Blue Jays players have had to step up and make big plays in this game. We've mentioned Alex Heron a couple of times, we've mentioned Connor Gagne a couple of times, Riley Mueller, TJ Wirtz. Um, these guys had to step up and, 
and, and make some pretty phenomenal plays. It hasn't been just, you know, grind, 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 make the play, but we've called, and I think like Braden Pullman, I don't want to leave him out either. He had a big touchdown catch. Um, they've had guys that have had to step up in big ways to pull this off tonight. Yeah, Upper Scioto Valley had an outstanding first half, but the St. John's, uh, those individual players and as a team, they have done what they have needed to do in the second half to put themselves in a position to win. And, you know, if you're going to have a great come from behind victory, you want to be behind early to give yourself time to come back. And St. John's gave themselves the second half, and they have held Upper Scioto Valley scoreless in the second half. 21 unanswered points for Delphus St. John's, and that will get it done here tonight. The Blue Jays, the 15 seed. Pull off the upset over the number two seed, Upper Scioto Valley Rams, 28 to 22. And it was a contest that, again, pulling away, you thought maybe St. John's was going to take care of business in this one. I think Upper Scioto Valley made it a lot closer than maybe a lot of people thought. Yeah, they definitely um, represented the Northwest Central Conference tonight. Had a great first half. It's just that St. John's made some adjustments and Maddox Underwood and company could not get that big play in the second half to get momentum on their side of the football. And St. John's, they just played methodical football and they got down to basics and the basics came out on top. Blue Jays get the win tonight, 28 to 22. Want to thank Zach Keith. Abby Beck for helping us bring you the sights and sounds of this one tonight. A uh, terrific matchup here as Adelphi St. John's continues their season. They will match up with, I would imagine, Tiffin Calvert here next week. That is going to wrap it up for us here. The final, once again, 28-22. Delphi St. John's over Upper Side of Valley. For Dave Bowen and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long, everyone, from McGuffey.